Carry-o, is that the Gary-o, carry -o. but I see on the other side a double toxic team, knocks a lot of Leo Vlarkinu. Looks like a pre-Arbury team to be honest if you ask me, but it still looks pretty balanced from the perspective. But Chelsea is no stranger yesterday, went up straight in semi-finals or up till semi-finals for sure. He put up a great performance, he even upset. The best of the best yesterday and he showed his peak performance as well. Chelsea has shown us that Gary Oak can do stuff that people don't even imagine doing. So Kinu knocks a lot of start the classic. Um, classic from Banana, one of the strong openers. Alright, so Minotaur looks really good if he wanted to take it, but banning Minotaur means that there will be no nerfs coming, uh, sorry, no black holes coming in. So I think Minotaur would be the nerf I would probably bend over, because Minotaur definitely looks like a bu nerf here, for, uh, bu sorry, ban here for sure. Looks like Minotaur will be the ban here for sure, and now we are looking at this. Uh, from perspective of Chelsea and I think personally I would say that um, well banning OB10 might not be the worst idea because he can be really annoying and everything on Chelsea's team is a single target user but he decides to go with the Nedrasil and I can respect that as well because uh, Nedrasil basically can counter this whole team with so much AoE damage right there and then with the AoE toxic ticks and keep them going down. Ukama doesn't like that. Skunch probably gets one shot by a narcoleptic hit. It will still get one shot by a beta burst that is true as well. But so far Banana has a very very thick team that definitely can stand up against Chelsea. If I am being fair it is really bulky team. Skunch is coming in trying to pack a punch. Hopefully Skunch doesn't end up showing up in front of Akinu. Otherwise It might be an issue. Garyo has an AoE, but does this Garyo run that? I'm just going off um, yesterday's semi-finals because I did not see this Garyo with a AoE move last night at least Correct me if I'm wrong because I, I remember from yesterday. I did not see it, but Today he might be different, to, uh, he might have changed the moves and I don't know, but from what I know historically I didn't see him yesterday in the whole tournament with an AoE attack. Was it Rock? No, I don't think so, I don't think so, but let's see. We shall see how much are we surprised from this matchup. Alright, we have so many spectators here right now. I see a Blunk in the audience. I see a Zolren in the audience as well, maybe. Enigma supporters in the chat. Full power. Looks like Inu will be strapping out. We have a Mimit coming in, which will be becoming a Noxalotl as well. This is really deadly. If both of them proc trans, that will be so deadly. Helicopter kick coming in. So tanky. 85, 88, both of them full tanky. Looks like Madness buff comes right in. Looks like the, he is ready to go tank mode and he will be tanking this fully plus one, plus three, plus two. No reset on the other side so there will be nothing that is going to reset this thing. Toxic King is online, we have Narcoleptic hit online as well. The problem is Nidrasil needs to be taken care of. Once the Nidrasil is done this match is looking pretty um, very very one-sided, but let's see Now to be honest the problem is how do they kill the Nidrasil because they need to kill the Nidrasil Otherwise this thing can get out of hand pretty quickly. I think Yovlar might be the best way to kill Nidrasil according to me at least Because um, Kinu, Garyo 
Nox, Scarawat. Actually, Scarawat can be a good way to deal with the Nox, but the problem is if Scarawat gets hit by a Depress, then that would be depressing by itself. Mimit can um, do a madness buff and then maybe turn himself into a Scarawat. That is also an option for sure. Seabite coming in on the Mimit. We have a madness buff on Mimit as well. Self proccing the trance plus four special defense. But the depress is going to be pretty bad here. But no full state kit on Mimit actually. Which is very very surprising for anyone who did not expect that. That Mimit has the first aid and Depress will be waking it up. Look, oh sorry it will not be waking it up but looks like that Mimit is going to get the hell out of there. With plus 4 plus 4 that Mimit is definitely getting out of here um, to get the healing going. But that is surprising to see for sure that is not something that anybody expected. I wonder what gear this original Oxalotl is running here. Probably energy drink maybe it still didn't proc though so maybe not but we will find out this turn if it is. This is really disgusting double knocks with the first aid kit on the Mimit actually. The problem though sadly is that the whole team on the other side is physical so the special defense is not helping much but if banana pairs up with someone that is special attacking they would have had a really bad day today cuz yeah killing those two knocks would have definitely been a problem for sure i think scarawatt swap in might not be a bad idea and for this side um scrunch swap in is not bad as well if he wants to do that but he might want to keep the Gialis around because definitely having that chamomile up is a good thing for sure. Yeah, that is a pillow and right there it procs up to 68%. Kinu comes in. Ready to do a stone wall or a sacrifice if required. Hook kick comes in on Kinu. Nicely tanking it up. No problems whatsoever. Spores comes in. Snare is applied on Nidrasil, whichever item he had is gone now. So Nidrasil no longer has his item, it is being snared by the Kinu, which is kind of huge as well. Now Kinu can sacrifice if it has, um, if it wants to, that knocks a lot of his immune. It will be plus 5, plus 3 and almost really really hard to deal with if there is a sacrifice that comes in. This match might be looking in a very very bad situation because that Noxolotl has self healing as well with the pillow. The only thing that can deal with that Nox is probably the Gialis and the Nidrasil with true damage but once that Nidrasil goes down this thing is looking very deadly and I will be honest with you on that. Gial is surely can be a problem but again um, Acid Reflux is ready at the moment to go and hit hard on the enemy team with plus 2 special attack. The Mimit is still healing up. It will be coming in with 58% HP whenever it is done healing up. Never heard people say that but looks like we have some wise so banana fans in the chat supporting for banana but he is an underdog right now according to the voting at least 1 is to 99. Viral and Gust coming in from that Nox. I have not seen that used for a hot while now. And there we go. That move comes in. Nidrasil down to 77.5%. But that Yovla looks pretty down to 52.1%. I'm not even sure if that Yovla gets an attack off or not. To be honest. Um, it's down to 52.1% already. If it can get at least a savage suplex off, that would be worth it for that Yovlar. But 
I'm not sure if it will get to do that. Uh, Gialis will heavy over Exode if he decides to stay in here. So Gialis probably swapping out. Nidrasil must stay in. Garyo can come in and avoid a Savage or an Oshidashi coming its way. So that is definitely a case for Garyo if it wants to come in. Looks like Gialis will be going out. Is this Akinu or uh, Gialis coming in? Uh, sorry, it will be a Garyo coming in. My bad. Auto Tommy being brought. Acid Reflux coming in. Perfect stamina. No overexertion here. Nidrasil going down to 48.3%. Savage Suplex is gonna be a problem, but Depress comes in on the Nox Lottel, taking it down to 41.8%. Garyo taking the Oshidashi in the face, 48.3%. This is looking really bad. The question is what happens next? Scarab what sadly cannot come in here. It is only Kino that might be willing to take in the Nox and Lottle spot at the moment. Or a Mimit that will become a Gary Yo upon coming in and then Actually, you know what? If Mimit becomes Gary Yo and then swaps out and then comes back in again, it will actually be what do you call it um, it will actually get evasion the next time it comes in so that might be very huge if you think of it in that way but Mimit has plus four special attack plus four special defense it definitely needs to become something that can utilize the special attack that it provides a Scarabot Scarabot would be really really deadly do not get me wrong that can be disgusting but the problem is Garyo is not special attacking, it is a physical attacker, so that is a problem. Uh, Banana in a tough situation right now, but he needs to maneuver around it and find his way through. Yovlar will be backing out right now. Mehmet making its way back in. Will be staying a Nox a lot, it looks like. Spores comes in, doesn't do much at all. Rockfall comes in as well, doesn't impact much. Trans being procked again here, this time on the other slot. Perfect for him, 39% plus sleep on top of it, which will be healing more with the pillow on that Noxolotl. He will probably be going out now. There is an impossible acid reflux coming in from the Mehmet with plus four special attack. That thing might be hitting like a truck. I wonder what is ready to take that hit because that is definitely gonna hit harder than the original Nox Lottel. So far this is a Nox game. If I have seen one, the main Nox is probably backing out to heal up. Possibly a Scarawatt coming in, maybe a Yovlar or Kino coming in. Uh, we shall see how that goes but... Yeah, this is about to hit hard. This Mehmet is definitely about to hit home or hit hit hard you can say acid reflux plus four special attack max special attack as well it's either a bulky one i think it is a bulky one because when the original noxolotl took a helicopter kick they both went down to 88 percent so they had a similar spread pillow procs in noxolotl goes out kinu comes in ready to sacrifice himself if required Acid Reflux comes in, plus 4 special attack, how much is this gonna hit and that is almost taking down the Gary Nidrasil barely living on the scrap, 8.6% depressed comes in, Kinu still alive, but Nidrasil kills himself, is that worth it, we are down with 3 times left now. The main problem is the real Noxolotl with plus 1 defense, plus 5 special defense. Mimit still alive as well. Skunch cannot come in against the Kinu. That is the problem for the Skunch. But we have already seen the Nox is running Narcoleptic hit as well. So this Skunch is probably useless in this match if you ask me. This Gialis has a lot to fill in right now. Probably a sacrifice coming in from this Kinu as well. Uh, this looks like a Scarawatt swap for one if they want to do that. Scarawatt swap into sacrifice is the play here. As for Shulzy, um, well that scunch is really really useless. Mehmet goes out and looks like the Scarawatt will be coming in. 
Scarawat comes in and we probably maybe have a sacrifice here. We will find out and that will be the sacrifice that Scarawat is not dying anytime soon. Plus 3 defense, plus 3 special defense. Crystal Bite comes in with the exhaust, doesn't do much at all. Beta Burst comes in as well. Down to 36%. That Scarawat is looking strong and hefty as hell. Uh, Noxalotl on 69.5% HP, probably maybe looking to come in. We do not know how this will go from here, but it is looking really bad at the moment. But the Mehmet comes in, it will be becoming another Kinu with plus 4 special defense. Is that another sacrifice? Does that Kino have sacrifice? If it does, then this is a really bad thing for Shelzy. But now the problem is if this Mimit swaps out and then comes back in later on, it's gonna proc a protector again. So that is a really big value for that Kino or that Mimit, you can say. <coughs> Kunas is about to get nuked anytime soon. Oh yeah, Lele. There's Tony hosting. Oh yeah, Lele. I'm trying, okay, I'm learning. Uh, but I guess that Kinu can swap out and it does. It will be using that protector later on. Nox a lot comes in. Ready to tank it up, no problem. Sharp Stabs comes in, doesn't really impact much. That is tanking it a lot. Hypnosis comes in on that Scarabot, buying some time for the team. The problem is now that Kinu, uh, the Gyalis has overexerted. Scarawat can swap out for that. Uh, Mimit again and it will be proccing a protector for the Noxalotl again. I think that's copyright purposes. He can't do Mr. Kunders without getting Kunders approval, you know. So that is for copyright purposes. He cannot do that. It was done to prevent the copyright. So we have a revitalize coming in on that Gyalis. The protector prof being propped up and it will be acid reflux coming in. That Kinu just got nuked out of here. Mirroring does a little bit of damage, but toxic ticks are going to show no mercy here for sure. Plus two defense, plus five special defense. Kunders about to get nuked. Any last words, my friend? It looks really bad with two Noxalotls looking you down the throat with double narcoleptic hit online. Kundas is not having a field day today. Mimit probably dying from Gyalis if I am being genuinely honest. Unless there's a Scarawat swap and he's just trolling it around but no sharp stabs comes in. Will be enough. That Nox will be going down. P jab coming in on the original Noxalotl now and we probably have a narcoleptic hit incoming. Slingshot Skunch it is, Narcoleptic hit comes in and that Skunch will be living another turn. Looks like it will be Yovler, Scarawat versus the World. Dox is still alive, might get swapped again as a bait. Baton Pass Prox in, that Scarawat 46% still alive. The moment Fire Tornado comes online, I think this match might be over. Wait, why does this Scarabot have plus one attack? Did I miss out on something? How did it get plus one attack? Hold up. Ah, uh, never mind. My bad. I'm just drunk. A uh, half full is the way it is. Sorry, my bad. I don't even know what I was saying for a second. I got flipped. Sea bite coming in on the Scarabot doesn't do much. 19.1% left. Match 1 looks like a legacy game to be honest here. That Gyalis is still surviving, trying to get as much information as possible. In Club Wars, it is a really important perspective that you get as much information of your opponent out as you can. 
Looks like Banana will be taking the lead for Legacy. It will be 1-0 for Legacy. And they are in. Let's jump right into this match and let's see how this goes. Bloomk versus TTF. The predictions are online, guys. Put your channel points in right now on whichever person you think is most likely to win. And I see Bloomk with a complete Sparks kind of team here. Looks fully aggressive, but it is a mid-range Sparks aggro, you can say. On the other side, we have Garunder to rock. Tulkin. Gary O, wait, this is something I have not seen before. We have a triple Gary O, uh, sorry, triple to Y evolution with the Gary O, Gialis, Garunder. Uh, the comp definitely looks a bit spicy on the side of Legacy, but again, Arachnat is not something we see every other day, so that is definitely something to check out as well. And it is equally spicy as well. Let us see how this match goes. Shuin with the water cannon is definitely a threat to be worrying about as well, to be honest. So maybe it might be the thing they are looking to ban. Um, Legacy's team is not working with buffs right now, so I don't think they need to ban the reset users. But yeah, Monko is left as it is. They are not worried about the reset users because they literally have a two kai which can completely clap over to be honest half of this team if nesla is getting banned then this two kai can basically just one shot a lot of those stems because water attack with shuin's on waste war so shuin's on noxious bomb is definitely gonna hit really hard and probably send it home as well if required we will see how this goes though Hazard to Rock looks like a really, really good opening here because Wastewater will cover up the Nestla as well. Hazard or Garunda, either one sounds pretty good because they have Wastewaters which will be covering up the Nestla as well. This is kind of really, really bad. Uh, for Blunk right now with that opener there is very few limited choices he has um nesla can go in but does not have a turn one water move and is has to respect the wastewater otherwise it will be punished very very hard uh, monko on the other hand is really good time in this because to rock is threatened with the monko clearly monko does not like to rock does not want to deal with the monko It looks like that to be honest that if Nestle is banned right here and they get the Tukai, it looks very very unfortunate that Tukai can literally sweep this match or has the potential to sweep this match for sure. So far we have the Nestle banned as well which means, well okay this looks pretty rough to be honest with you. That Tukai should not have left open, should not have been left open because that noxious bomb looks like it is hitting pretty hard on the Tulkin, on the Arachnite. And the wind attacks of course are not looking good on that Tottenite at all. I mean, to be honest, it was either Nesla or Tottenite. And I think, I mean, I'm not disrespecting cause um, even if Toto was banned, then you're right, Garunda literally kills everything in the other team on the right slot. But now Tottenite is a possible swap in, but again, um, Legacy has three wins if you think of it, and they can literally deal with that Tottenite no problems any time of the day, right? Yeah, Tolkien looks like the closing deal for this one for sure. Tolkien is good, but I think Hazard might be better because Wastewater, another Wastewater user is not bad. The only problem is he's weak to Tolkien as well, so I'm not sure if he wants to run the risk of that. 
over um, going with a safe pick like Tolkien but he will go with the hazard as well and let us see how this match turns out to be Bloom versus TDF Legacy match number two of this club wars right now let us see how this match turns out to be let me see wait what did i say did i say something that was tos monk s Turok is going out at the moment we have a psycho coming in which is a gialis threatening the gazuma out of here monko is looking like he will be going with those punches Soul Shout coming in on that Gialis hitting so hard, 17.7% left over, but the mirroring comes back in as well. Dingodil with the rest plus defense. I don't know if TTF has realized yet, but the problem here is that the whole enemy team is literally a special attacking team. So he needs to not take that uh, resting buffs. He would ha he needs to start attacking basically, because otherwise the the defense buffs are not going long. The thing is actually if if Tukai is forced to come in before Gazuma is dealt with. Let me think of it. To be honest, what is Blunk looking at? Is Blunk looking to make that? <coughs> Uh, make that what do you call it Monko even more buffed the problem right now if if Paizo electric blow is up then it is gonna smack very very hard on the left hand slot it doesn't matter what comes in it will be getting a hard hit for sure so that is something he definitely needs to worry about if it is a Paizo electric blow it's gonna hurt hard for sure Chap Chaps comes in, Humpful Microwaves will be going up as well, enough to kill the Gialis for sure. That uh, that Monko is really, really low at the moment. And a Paizo Electric Blow comes in. At this point, it looks like a free field for Tukai if it wants to come in. The only problem is that... Actually, you know what? Turok is not looking bad as well. Um, to rock or to two, one of them probably comes in and starts wiping this up. Gazuma is a problem for Tukai to start carrying this match, but for now, I think Legacy can play safe. For now, I think TTF can play safe and not risk the Tukai till the very end until the Gazuma is dealt with completely. As I said, Hazred makes his way in. Fake beard has red, probably ready to lava wave or waste water. The Gazuma, once the Gazuma is dealt with, this is definitely gonna be a case where how to kill this Garunder is a question that is being running around Blunk right now. That Garunder literally has no counters at the moment. This looks like a Florida man game or a Dingo Dale. He is really strong into this matchup and he is chilling right now. Uh, no damage taken, 56% stamina still left on it. I wonder what swaps are coming in and is he going to Sparks it up again? Because Sparks might not be the best idea against him right now. He needs to output raw damage right now in case for this to work. Otherwise, this is not working well for Blunk so far in the long term Paizo electric blow is definitely gonna be a problem again it one shots the Tolkien it one shots the spider most likely as well actually spider might be immune but here we go to rock making its way in here Sparks comes in Wastewater coming in as well, it will be doing the damage, poison take applied, but it has bait, will be taking it nice and easy, an unseen blow coming in on the Turok, this might be 
pretty bad he did not wanted to take that bait being applied as well this definitely hits hard the problem here is that stoneball kills a lot of stuff but the problem is to rock will not get a turn to play the bait did not get rid of plus two otherwise it would be really bad well that arachna definitely needs to be dealt with another sparks comes in is this going to be an arachna sweep the rock fall comes in and it will be hitting really hard Thunder strike coming in on that to rock and it will be going down. This spider needs to be immediately killed before it becomes a problem. And Dingodil just rested another turn, which means that spider lives another turn. I think that spider needs to be dealt with right right now, otherwise, it can really be a problem to the back line. Because plus three special attack, it has the potential to one shot. Probably either one of the coming in temps. Let me see how this goes now. Hazrat has made its way in. I can predict the Tukai coming in and probably a Lava Wave Synergy on the Spooder to get that Spooder down. But Bloom's Gazuma is not doing much work yet. The problem is that this Gazuma is not going to last long against the Dino Dingo or Dingo Dial in the long run. Um, the problem still is that ETF is down two times now and Bloom is not. He needs to kill the spider on high priority, otherwise the spider is gonna be a problem. Tornado is up and online, probably going on that Hazrat right away. Hazrat possibly doing a trade as well, if there is a piezoelectric blow coming in on this puder right now. Spider backs out, will not be taking this fight right now. We will have a Tulkin coming in, but Paizo Electric Blow definitely gonna hurt hard on this. Lava Wave comes in on that Tulkin, doesn't hit much at all. Barely 21% waste water coming in. Will be hitting hard. 41.6%, 28.9% left. Tornado is up and online again. The problem is Lulu uh, Legacy is pretty much pinned down right now. That Gazuma is gonna be a problem, but it has to be dealt with. If it was killed, then that would be really um, a good and easy game for DTF to pick up. But this looks like a very, very rough situation for DTF at the moment. So Tutu makes its way in for the Lava Wave Synergy, I believe, but Tornado will be going first. And it will be killing the Hazrat down. Telsa Prison comes in and this is looking really bad. For the 2-2 minus speed being applied as well. Reactive while okay. Reactive while is kinda huge here, not gonna lie. It changes the flow of the momentum a little bit for sure. Um, that Gazuma needs to go down in the next two turns, otherwise this match is looking very, very bad. Can 
Can TTF Legacy make sure to kill that Gazuma before it's too late because it definitely needs to go down. Otherwise, does it die to Tolkien because there is a Noxious Bomb Shuin's on which we can Wait, actually there is no Shuin's on because there is reactive vial. Hmm. That changes the flow of the situation all over again. Hold up. I was expecting the whole time it was a Shuin's on um, to Kai, but looks like we do not have a Shuin Kai or Hon Kai as people call it. We have something different here. Tornado is a heavy over exhaustion. I don't know if over exhaustion is what you want to do at this point in the game. Tsunami comes in. It will be not hitting that hard because of the bone status. But is that enough? That is enough to get that token down. Wastewater coming in as well. It will be enough to get that second kill. Garunder versus the world at the moment. This took. Uh, this Tukai has a tornado online. Is this tornado gonna be fast enough to go before the spider is the question. The spider has to make its priority. Does the spider attack the Garunder or the spider attack the Tukai? The tornado is probably ready. The question is will tornado outspeed and kill the Spooder or is Spooder gonna go first? We will find out. This is very close. Parzo Electric Blow is online as well. And I think TDF has to overexert here, even if required to get this kill secured. This Pooder has to die this turn, otherwise, TDF still has a good chance of losing this match. And the tornado will be going through. This Pooder will be going down. And this looks like a TDF game, with that being said, because now. There's very little that can be done here with the Shuin's on Saipat. Definitely not much that TTF uh, that Bloom can do at this point. Paizo Electric Blow comes in 100 to 21.8%. With plus 2 defense on his side, this looks very unlikely for TTF to lose at the moment. Nico Sai coming in. Let us see how much damage that does that do. And it will be down from 91 to 67.5%. Rumation procs again and that will be a matcha proc as well This will be the GG for match number two Blunk will be going down as well TTF legacy taking it away That will be a 2-0 for legacy at the moment can we have some people collapse in the chat for both of the teams And now, like from Banana side, here, he's also starting to running down time here, and uh, have been bouncing like really back and forth with all of the towns. It's really hard to just, uh, make a decision here, but th that door is going to be banned here, so we will see no green bean here. Let us see. I mean, hmm. Adoro. I'm not sure what Adoro was offering in this match that much that he was feared of not letting it in. Uh, all he. All he can be a problem if you think of it. Um, Scarawat can be a good start to begin, but looks like Kino Yovlar might be the start that Banana might be going for the classic um, Kino Yovlar for, you know, tried and tested for a lot of patches by now. Yeah, like, of course. We all know what Jowler Kino can always do here, but also, like, um, Kino can always put a early on pressure on uh, Auli here, so Auli is not really comfortable to stay, even though you can take in one better bird, roughly comfortable, I'm gonna have to say, depending of course on how you have been specking your own uh, flying bird here, but in, in general, like, normally you don't want to take too much damage from a mental, which this case is gonna be kind of nasty if that's happening, so if you have something you can block it, that's really good. I'm kind of worried for banana right now because you can clearly see the reset user has been picked and not a banana really relies on 
you know playing the buffed up temps and if he gets reset that's gonna be really demoralizing um again nox being picked up and so is you Larkino. all of them are doing buffs and they rely on buffs as well so having a reset user on the other side is definitely a bad thing but i think the the time that they need to deal on high priority is that literally you need to kill that all he uh, once that dies the noxalotl can start working on stuff here but i still see that there is gonna be a problem of killing that garunda because that garunda has no counters around unless ob10 is running digital and we have some dooms coming in later in this match there is a couple of at least ob that is indeed running with the um, Digifred here, but all depending on, of course, how you want to build your OB. Mostly OBs are just pure support, so that means they barely run any, any sort of like attacking move. But in this case, like you're still having Kino, so there's a possibility that you're having digital threat, which is a good in this case. Do you see any possible Doom removals on the other team? I guess OB10 reset is one, but other than that? I, it's depend. Garunda, I believe, is running with the uh, Pegasio. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So that means they are at least having two that can remove Dooms quite easily, but you don't really want to use your reset as a Doom removal, like, if you already have buffs on that, the being Doomed. You also waste a turn in doing that, you know. Like the opponent invests mm -hmm. a turn in dooming you, but you also invest a turn in wasting it. And looks like we have a Sparks Arachnid Adaptive plus two special attack, looks like it. But does that matter? Because oh. the reset is gonna remove that. Unless the Arachnid decides to swap right now. Do you like the change with the reset, JT, where it doesn't proc anymore before the swap, so people can counterplay that now? I think it, it's a good thing that they adjusted a little bit, I'm gonna have to say. So before, like, sure, you immediately can remove all, all of the buffs before even they can swap. Sure, it's good upon one thing, but that means you kind of, like, not destroying the game, but as you quickly, like, eliminating any chances to, like, having a... Some play. some kind of a chance to come back. Yeah, you basically remove the counterplay on that, right? There is no counterplay. If if a reset user just swaps in in your face while you have a buffed up time, previously you will be like, shit, I'm fucked. I can't swap. Um, I I am losing all those buffs now. I can't do anything. Now it makes but here's... you a choice, right? Now that you have a choice, if you want, you can back out and waste a reset there. For example yes but here's also the tricky part and if your opponent expecting the reset is swapping out but you decided not to use it because you expecting as well him to swap out or her depending who, who it is so it could also be a little bit mind playing there as well so we do see that both of our starting to becoming more of a dangerous temp and both leaving the battlefield and letting both Anatan and Kinus coming in here as the reset, we talked about this, have already been used on both sides there. Yep. The only thing now is that OB10 has the Doom and it can apply the Doom if required. I wa like, it would have been pretty pog if it had the Digi Thread and it actually used Digi Thread on Anatan instead of um, the other one, because then OB10 would waste another turn on reset as well. Mm -hmm. And push and reset, both of them can remove Doom as well. So this match is looking like it will be a long match, to be honest. It can potentially be a very long match here, but however, uh, if this uh, Obi doesn't run with Digifred, I don't see a world where Anathan doesn't uh, heal up here. I think this is a free heal up, like there's really no pressure on the board for Anathan. So you can see definitely like a major Swarm or... Uh, mineraling hail is coming up in the, the turn after but if we do see a um, a digifred here with doom on garun that have to come in on this board as well used to helping out to preventing later on i mean 
either that or we have bush we have reset as well or no b10 to remove the doom Anatan with the sparks special attacking Anatan by the way quartz dirt coming in oh the jank is still alive oh that did you yeah and here yeah but here's though another issue look if we only talking about how you can remove doom sure we still can go back to uh, your reset user on obi town you have inga runders purgation but if you go back to obi you know what obi also have which is already activated a turn ago mm. it's it's loveless bush yep it's bush and reset uh, both of the moves that it has can remove the doom but I think it's all about the damage that is going out right now. It's down to 42.5%. Yeah. I think once that OB10 dies, this team becomes a problem because Nox and Mimit can stack up pretty quickly. We have seen that in the last match, how hard it was hitting. And against Banana's team, special attacking temps don't do anything because that Nox will definitely hit like a truck. Oh, yes, indeed. We do see actually Jolly coming back in here, letting Keen out of here. Obis leaving as well, and we are going to have a. Um, if I'm reading this correctly, a double Jolly? Probably. This bush is happening here, and a fiery soul trying to do some damage on Keen, but. This is like, you're literally scratching on Yowler, like back scratching it. He kind of feel really re relief of being scratching. Mm. I mean, he is going to try to double lane on ob and try to get that kill as soon as possible, because that kill is really required right now. Yes, and now um, I'm wondering it though, if this Mimit doesn't have uh, any speed, that means they, they will go at the same time, but hey, look at this, a reset happened and a uh, chain heal, so the AAA may be surviving this double combo. Is it? Ooh, no. No, okay, this is where... Uh, the momentum might be about to start changing if you think one yovlar was a problem well we have two of them here on field the problem now is that if that knocks a lot comes in if it starts becoming a problem this is really gonna be a deal that he needs to deal a deal with it um because this is definitely a problem the mimit i think will be swapping out for the real knocks uh, but if that happens then sadly Mimit cannot become Nox again. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, I'm just a little bit curious over this decision of uh, Arcanach just coming in here on the board. And if I not misremember, I believe Cozy Net is just a one hole. So if you potentially can reading and Obis coming in, and you aim it correctly on one of the slots you can trap it in and you can do a double up on the ob because you're trapping it and you're sleeping it so maybe you're having enough damage to take it up well with aconite you definitely have as owl is coming in here on the board and we do see as saga like you predict Predicted here, a Noctis coming in on the board, but we do see both Yalus actually leaving this. And a Akin is coming on the other side here. So let's see, what is this Akronach is going to do? Oh hey! Oh ho! That's a dead Kinu. Feels bad, man. Yeah, that feels really bad because on one side you're losing a receptor. And, and help it for busher and such that can helping out to removing doom and so on but for banana side here like you're losing a synergy for digi threat you're losing a, a the camp buff that can heal and so on so they have both lost a equally like valuable tam for support way hmm. 
but both of them also got so much value to get rid of those temps. True. Obitan can come in right now and threaten the Arachnid to back off because of the reset. Um, Alhi is already threatening the Nox a lot, but the positioning of Banana Stems is not the best at the moment. The Nox needs to be on Obitan slot, so. I think we have a Yovlar Swapin coming in on that knock spot while Obi-10 is gonna try to chill out this place. Maybe Bush, maybe Reset, depending on how the reads go. If he reads that uh, uh, the Spider is not swapping out, he can go for that Reset. Mm -hmm. But it's at night, like... He can't really stay on the board. Like, if you feel feeling like the two special attack damage is so important for Aconite, you kind of have to swap it out. Then you de indeed have options to swap it into. So, it should be an issue to swap it out. But we do see Jowls coming in. Instead of the Noxus standing there, Aconite indeed leaving the board. And Garunder is coming in on the board here. And I'm like, Crocodiles? Double okay. Hmm. So the double edge is happening here. Going back to becoming the buff Yowler again, since I mean, Valtteri already lost its resetter, so they can't reset Yowler. But the only way now to heal up Yowler, well, there are technically two ways to heal it up. Yowler can do hibernating just to bump it up back its HP, or you bush, but that's like every third turn. If that all he goes down, then there's gonna be a lot of problems here for this heal player. I wonder what did Obi-10 click, because it didn't even get to attack this turn. Okay, I imagine... Hmm. Ooh. Okay, so the hibernating definitely helping out here. But if actually that were not a, a hibernating turn, and if that double edge... Now, of course, double edge only will do one base damage thanks to being a neutral to energy that could have been really bad you know well now the good thing that come out from this is he can bush and remove the frozen and do a suplex or something along the way you know he doesn't really need to rest this turn he can actually attack while being a bush so he can do a bush and then go smork on something and that is still gonna hurt hard yeah, indeed. And I think from this position that you kind of swap in from Yowler and go for immediately for Obi because Obi is going to be one of the problems here. Why, why having one when you can have two? Mm, fair enough. I mean, he decides to not attack. With, uh, sorry, not attack with the Yowler. He instead decides to do the swap. Okay, double ledge on the Mimit. Mm. I don't know, this, this is looking looks... very passive, to be honest, when he could go aggressive there. Yeah, I think uh, he's trying to somehow setting up Mimit and Jowler so they can be like the, the wing con here at this moment. But as long as Owl is just standing there and getting for free, just P-jabbing, that's, that's just a big issue. However, Garunder actually having water jet, so I'm a little bit wondering if you if you have a feeling that it's gonna be a swap on that, you could actually just target Ob with the, the PJ water jet, and you can get rid of Ob almost immediately. Which means, whenever Mim is swapping out, you cannot getting back your Ob. It will be turning into something else. And we see the hook kick is coming in here from Aoi, not taking out quite, it's 10% there, hanging on the small thread there. But the first aid kit here, helping push it back up to 35 as Garund is taking a small break while Mimit buffing up Nox here, becoming a little bit beefier, I'm gonna have to say here. Unfortunately, on this position, Aoi have to rest because, I mean, you can go for another... Uh, attack it, but that's gonna mean you overexert, which means I can't do anything this turn. So Nox here is kind of happy with this position. I'm 
gonna have to say though that I'm thinking like throwing in Anatan on this board here. Just swapping out Auli, letting it rest for probably two turns, just getting back the stamina, let Anatan try to do some work here because Yowler is potentially the only temp that can actually put threats on the board here. I don't know, I feel really bad when uh, Nox is left on board with no threats because that will be a problem otherwise. We have a reset coming in on that Garoon, their Paizo electric blow coming in. Mimit will be going down to 4.2 but has the uh, Madness buff comes in on the Nox. Oh, hey. now we're having issues here. Yep. Wait, do we? Do we have issues here? I mean, if we're looking at Nox. Like, Nox is already having, like, of course, one buff defense, and there's only Auli that can be... I mean, of course, you have Garuna as well that can do some physical damage here, but Auli is only, like, potentially threat to uh, Nox here. While Aconite and Anatan, they are on special attacker right now. They're not going to do any lot of damage here. Yeah, and and Aconite is... is slower than Nox. Since the bush is online and Garunda is almost out of stamina, I don't think... Okay, never mind, no bush was used. I'm starting to wonder, does Banana actually have bush? Because he has not used it yet at all. So I'm not even sure if it has a bush right now. Maybe he had, but he decided not to do it. He was hoping that... Uh... Anatan might go, I don't know, go balls to the wall and just try to do some heavily damage towards Nox here, but that's not the case. Mm. However, we do see Yowl is coming back in here almost immediately. Like, okay, Yowl doesn't have plus one attack that can do some threatening damage towards Anatan, but this. But Oshi's still online, which means you can still do some decent damage. While Nox is just sitting there and resting for another turn, of course, Obi Might's coming in here, but Banana have already lost Mimit and Kino, like two towns that is very, like, uh, impenetrable on try to helping out the building of the team in a certain way and you have lost them you only have obi now that can helping out buffing whenever you have to so it's down to the limit for banana and he have now to make uh, decisions out of the gecko right now and also we already know the first aid kit is on the mimit which means it might be a pillow on nox I, I, I might have missed it yeah, it, it is, is a pillow. pillow, okay. And that then that explains a lot there. Oh, restore Anatan, okay. Do you see some waste water coming from Garun there? Applying it towards Yowler here. I'm gonna put it closer to a kill range here. Garunda taking that pretty okay anyway I'm gonna have to say but another savage that's gonna be a dead Garunda. Yeah that would be Garunda. A Garunda I guess. Uh, but the problem is again still that all he is alive and that all he can destroy the Nox a lot with only plus one defense. Yes, but you have to get into that point where you can actually put pressure towards it. I'm gonna have to say that, that Garunder is also a big threat here for Nox because you can do any Tox damage towards it. That is so true. And then the Paisa Electric Blow is coming out here, taking care of Yaola as it's going for a huge overexertion, which means it's going to die to this as a reflux is coming in as well. That Garunda threat went down pretty quickly by himself, though, Monk has. Yeah. And here comes the Quartz third, doing roughly 10%, though. Obi then again will be coming in 
threatening that arachnid to get out of here. I still wonder if he has the bush because we have not seen bush being used even till now on this ob10 so we do not know if this ob10 has bush reset probably a thing if it needs to be used right now banana is hanging on this noxolotl to take the win but it is gonna be rough or tough for sure yeah and oh almost taking out the ob and he decides to borrow here which of course means that nox is gonna be Stay, staying safe layer for a little bit of time Can and getting this why, pillow why did that arachnid with plus two special attack not kill ob10 with a spike is it that bad or is this ob10 just bulky do you have to consider like two things uh since this is an adaptive acronite which means you do not get any stab for c bite and they could be able to be that case that ob is actually Fake. I can see what you mean. I guess it is Noxolotl versus the world and this looks like an unlikely match to win. It is possibly the no stab, the main reason that this is not doing as much damage as most people expect. Now, if no Valteria, I mean Valteria can just go pretty much balls to the wall here with both. I mean, you can even just I don't know. I, I don't know exactly much what Akronite's moveset is. I know that there's four very different egg moves it had, but um, Auli doesn't want to come in and taking uh, free toxic damage. Oh, here comes a Soul Shout. Just tickling on this uh, Nox. Nox need to apply like every f third turn to um, having this acid reflux. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the toxic things needs to help out. So, but it's a problem. You're having a crystal and you have a oh, you're having a not a digital. So, Acronite is having a little bit of an issue. Did you call it Acronite? I think I did. Mm. Well, it is clearly, I mean, it is gonna live another turn, but I think a narcoleptic hit is gonna be enough to get the kill, but does Nox wanna do that is the question. I think Nox might just wanna rest this turn. As, oh, I think also you just procced trans, which means it will be even difficult here. However, if you were expecting to land in there, you could actually just throw it in uh, Auli. Which I think you kinda have to do. Does Auli have hypnosis? Uh, I am not sure if it has. But it doesn't matter since it's gonna have alert the next turn. But I feel like here, like you kind of have to go balls to the wall, even though you want to get rid of. Um, not only do you want to get rid of the plus defense, you want to get rid of that and generating tick as well. And go directly balls to the wall here with the turbine, putting it down to 23. Soulfire is going to remove the heal, which is very important. Taking an oversession for it. Acid Reflux coming in from 100% OLA down to 40, an additional 12.5%, which will probably be putting it below 28%. If Nox could live another turn or two, maybe it could take this match away, but the Dalhe taking zero damage throughout the match, coming in 100% with the Nox is sadly not possible to win this. Looks like the Boomerang will be enough and that Nox will be going down. It will be a GG. Yeah, GG for Volteria and also GG for Banana. Actually played quite well, I'm gonna have to say. Anyway, so... 
looking on at least on Sefi's team here, it is a uh, kind of an interesting team here. Having a Naga here, sure, you're having two free towns that doesn't like any water, so this could potentially be a water custodian, more or less. I mean, if it's DA, then you have to do something creative out of it, but it leans more towards, for me, a water custodian. Could be for sure. Um, Dulkin takes care of... Mm, how do you think... What do you think about Garunder again in this matchup? Looks really strong, right? If Ruler was taken care of, then Garunda looks really, really strong in this matchup as well. Yeah, actually, like Garunda have a lot of like towns he can handle quite well here. N not to lie here, but from Lampozola's side here, not picking Garunda directly. Maybe it's going to be picking here as a second, if not getting banned here, of course. But Wolfie and Tuvine here out of the get go. Of course, you're having a really, really strong wolf on the board that can put some pressure towards the roller here. And of course, depending on what's going to happen on the other side. Well, Tuvine can't really do too much here because most likely this roller is a fixed skin, which means all wind damage is going to be reduced by 50%. And if you try to do any crystal moves, huh, it's another like half damage. So you, you can't do much here. I definitely think locking in Garunda would have been better, just swapping it out turn 1 if required even. That would be really good because it just kills so much in the enemy team. I guess Legacy right now is just praying that Sephius does not ban that Garunda right now because it can be a really good addition on this match for sure. Mm-hmm. I do definitely agree with you there. And unfortunately, we will not see a uh, crocodile on this board. That is really sad that Garuno would have been definitely clutch in this match. Actually, you know what? Don't get me wrong. This to to wine actually is destruct uh, destroying a lot of stuff as well. It hits the Naga, it kills the Amphitheater, it kills the Minotaur with 4x as well. So, no offense. Yeah, like Tuvine is pretty strong as well. Yeah, Tuvine here is quite strong in, in overall if you're looking over Cepheus' team here, yes, but if you're looking at the start here, it is not looking like that threatening on the board here, you kind of have to yeah. lean directly towards Akronite, just try to do that early damage here on, on the spider, but if this roller can get off a stone ball for free, I mean sure, don't get me wrong, Tuvine is bulky by its defense, but getting a stone ball, nah, you're still losing a lot of chunk. Yeah, Tuvine needs to be preserved, so I think the swap into Calibus or maybe even Kino might not be a bad idea. I think Calibus is a better idea to swap into right now on turn 1. And Wolfie attacks the Rolder because the problem is Wolfie attacks everything pretty hard here. Rolder, Naga, mm -hmm. um, even the Platymus as well. If Minotaur gets stuck with the Plague, then it will be getting Dust Vortex the next turn as well, and that definitely hurts as well. So Wolfie looking quite strong as well on that slot. Yes. Wolfie here indeed looks very strong. Like it it is so strong on towards so many times on Sephir's side here. We do see the token being picked here, but I think Wolfie is gonna probably be one of the key towns for Lampazola here to actually taking the, this game home. But we will do see if that's the case. Maybe he has something else that is can be the carrying town into this battle. And we, I gotta have though to say that we have a quite a lot of interesting name as well on these tents. Mm -hmm. Quack Jack. <laughs> and we have also a uh, Kino Kong and the Two Fine. Damn, Two Fine, Big Papi, Florida Man is not playing this match. Otherwise, I would have called him for like being a Florida Man all day long. I'm just sitting here wondering, what can actually Akronite do turn 1 here? Like, it has... I haven't dig too much into its move pool, so I do not... I'm a little bit unsure exactly what it has, but I don't see too much what it can do.
Protect the buff and mom's launches on the board here. Do some early damage here. And ooh, this drill impact not gonna do as much damage. And on the block coming as well. And it, that did a total of almost 30%. So that was a good swap for Lorex here to eating all of this neutral damage. Kino just likes to take that, especially that Unseen Blow. That did nothing on Kino. Yeah, Kino absolutely loves having some of these for sure. But all there is kind of... Yeah. Hmm. In a rough spot, but it is not stuck yet in there. Does that mean it is a burglar wolfie? It could be actually a burglar wolfie. You could be right on that spot here. And we do see another Plagueis landing, but this time on Quacked Act. And I dress Dress and Trap is coming in as well. And at that doing a total, like, over 50%. And here comes the Cozy Net. This is a very cool animation. The Wolfie goes to sleep. We will find out later on what he is all about. The question is, do we have any Wolfie counters on the enemy team? And sadly, the answer looks like no. So Wolfie can be buffed up by Lorax um, using Kino Kong and... That can be a problem later on to deal with because that Wolfie has no answers right now, directly. I mean, if you could get back Roller into the board here, or if now Minifor acts is running with a uh, black hole, you can actually do some physical damage. So as long as you can somehow bypass the Wolfie's physical, you still have a chance. But if we're talking about the special part, Nah, there's there's nothing they can do. Like they they kind of need to somehow wasting Wolfie's stamina. That's probably the one, not the only way, but one of the very few ways how to handle this Wolfie. But this Wolfie is, as it is right now, quite fast. And Wolfie's stamina is not the best as well, from what I see in this match. It used two plagues and it went down to eleven point some percent. So. It clearly does not have the best stamina um, investment done into it as well. Not even for three plagues, so maybe Lorex needs to check on that for sure. You, you're kind of forgetting about that. Kino actually came in with ah, Mom's, Mom's Lunch. lunch. Mm, so it's for three plagues, I would say. You're right, I completely missed on that. We do see two swaps are happening, and oh, this Toxic Chow is coming in here. Sure, it will protect the uh, uh, Quack Jack here. And we do see it is a react reactive vital Naga. Calabis is eating this quite comfortably. And now Naga sits here pretty okay. Does also feel too pressured by the Calabis, but the Calabis can still do some damage. And if you can at least apply uh, this ticks. Yes, this to toxic stick. Then Naga's getting started getting a little bit like, okay, so I need to start doing something. I either do some work here or I just I had to get out of it immediately. And it, this is kind of like not a good board state that you you're coming in, activating your reactive idol, and then leave. You kind of have to do something with Naga now, especially as I was expecting this is a border custodian, but when we see reactive vital. It kind of leans into now, it is double day DA. Also, we got confirmed that Wolfie is team elusive as well in this scenario. Oh, yes, that, that is true as well. Do you think Wolfie snaps or just stays in? I don't see a problem on Wolfie staying in because nothing really threatens it still. Well, you kind of have to realize him, Wolf is trapped. Bad, it is trapped. It's not going anywhere. It's just chilling. Yeah, but even though it still has one plus special defense, so I think Wolf is actually fine by taking hits if it's actually happening. So an Ice Delegate like is coming in here doing some good chunk of damage here. And the better burst landing on towards the Calabisa doing good damage. And also the Rotten Goo seizing whatever item that uh, Calabis had. 
I'm surprised as to why toxic ink was not being used because toxic applying a toxic take this naga would have been maybe down to 40% right now because toxic ink would have done the same damage as well with neutrality but applying those toxic takes is important it is damage over time and it is definitely something you look forward to for sure to having it on at all times I kind of see what is Lampazola is trying to do here. Since he's applying uh, Isolatic here, which gives you two turns of freeze, and then if you're applying uh, Tink, which gives you three poison takes or two poison takes, which means Wolfie having a open gate to actually attack with the super effective move. Because you're pushing off the new, uh, new nutrition. Did not apply even. I see. I see what you mean now. That makes a lot of sense. It definitely does. But what I meant is, it could have just been done the other way around, right? Toxic ink first, and I stalactite after that. So now it would be having a toxic tick on it, you know. That's what I meant. Mm, yeah, I, I see a point there as well. And oh. Uh, looking out for the swaps maybe it was doing it for a rack night you know and also something that we can see here that this is not an adaptive uh, rack night this is actually a digi protector sadly not many digitals on the other side to protect or take less damage from yeah, so you're just gonna eat everything that is coming your way, even though you're having heavy armor, which is reducing um, 10 15%, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's 10%, I believe. It could also be the case that he's trying to use uh, Acknight here with Naga. DA to becoming from being a slow spider to becoming a very nasty going fast spider. Of course, if you're having um, powerful microwave, you always want to go, you're going first no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. Also, the hmm. is that a swap? We have a token coming in. If that was a whirlwind, then that is a problem, but. I don't think Platinum is clicked on Whirlwind. Chamomile comes in. Plague will be hitting the spider down to 21.2%. Is this a cozy web coming in again? It is indeed. Oh. And this time it's trying to apply it on Tall Cam, but thanks to the Chamomile, it got. Nope. That was so much denied. That Wolfie can take the free swap now, possibly going out and sending the big poppy in again. This is looking like rough because Sephir needs to find a way to crack through this uh, Lorex lock that Lorex has put in on field, which is problematic situation. But I think Tolkien might swap out for Kinu again. Because it looks like an aquatic whirlwind turn and he does not want to face that as a toolkit for sure. Yeah, that is true. However, I believe in if you do aquatic whirlwind here with Platymus, you will most likely go for overexertion. But at this point, it feels like you kind of have to get some aggressions going on here and hoping that Tolkien stays. But you having both Calabas and you also having Kino in the back line that can eat this aquatic whirlwind pretty comfortably but i think caleb is probably the, the better one to actually throw in there to taking just the water damage but whatever the spider is going to do that's going to be another question i think spider over exerted oh wait no never mind it was one no it's that just exerted. i don't even think Fulpa did over exert it just got perfect stamina hmm. and we do see a bulls coming in here oh and if this is actually a but well, most likely a rusher is gonna get some value right here. And there is a multiple switches happening here right now. And I have a small feeling this could be potentially a um, a black hole synergy move or uh, turn, I mean. But at the same time, like. You kind of want to use also like a regular sparking bullet here because Kino's gonna take 
normal damage, you're having Calibus that's going to take two times, you have uh, Tolkien that's going to take two times, you're having two Vine in the back that takes neutral, the only one that can actually eat this really comfortably is Wolfie. If you think of it, and um, he, like, Lorax clearly needs to get um, the synergy off, because once that is off, then he can try to maybe buff up, but he doesn't really need to buff up. The typings are just in his favor right now. And even bringing a Wolfie in, if required, might be not a bad idea, even with plus one, plus one, because he just has the value that it can provide purgation comes in on the roller it is going to attack hard for sure but resin trap comes in on that roller can it live that it barely does 24.6 percent left stone ball comes in on the wall the plus one defense doesn't do anything at all barely taking damage this wolfie yeah and this is this is a board that is not good right now, and um, Wolfie or Kino de deciding who wanna really attack first, but either of those two can just kill Roll without any problem. But I think if Wolfie kinda need to lean towards and putting some apply damage to Minafor here, so Minafor doesn't get too much value from this board. And here comes the black hole. This animation is also very, very cool. It is going to remove any kind of status buffs that Wolfie had. So this means this Wolfie is fragile again. The revitalize comes in. healing both Kino and Wolfie itself, so it, Wolfie's really wanted that quite badly. But now, like even Aquatic Whirlwind will do not huge damage here, but it's gonna definitely do some decent damage here. It definitely packs a punch, but it's not gonna hurt a lot, as you know, some of the other things could do. But this matchup is looking really, really rough. Um, the Wolfie start was good. I, I just wondered how bad could it be if the Garunder was in there from Lorex as well, but they had a rough pick and ban and I think they are facing it right now that Lorex is not even buffing his stems up, but just the pure typing that he has at the moment is just being a disadvantage for the Enigma players to deal with at the moment. Yeah, and um, like right now, like like you're saying, like there's so good typing right now from Lorex, like there's not really much you can do to go behind it. And then Wolf is having high special defense. It's make it also quite difficult to taking care of this Wolfie. But you're starting giving it too many speeds now for um, Roller here. And Ultrasound is trying to getting Kino into a um, into, into a spot where it can get uh, what's it called? Uh, overexerted. But mm -hmm. the bait value comes in. Bait value. Now, Cepheus doesn't really want to take Minifor out of it because you have plus three and you just want to try to use it as efficiently as possible. Now, you're I mean, facing a Crystal Temp. Yeah, which Minotaur is weak by 4x. Naga is yep. weak by 2x. Spider is just dying because he's low. And Quackjack doesn't like to take a plague, so this is kind of a checkmate situation where he can't really do anything at the moment. And from this point, you kind of have to go like, I normally say like balls to the wall, like you need to start doing damage on Turbine here. But that means you're leaving Wolfie completely open as well. But Zephyr doesn't have any swaps that can take that good enough. As haste along and a quarter one coming in, not being enough to take it out to Vine here. And oh, he was ex probably expecting the swap from uh, Minifor, and but killing that Platinum is 
still huge though. Of course, having low defense, it's quite of a major factor for Flanimus. Cannot take any like physical at all. I mean, but now I will not lie to Wine has really, really bad special defense as well. For a moment, I thought it might die to that aquatic whirlwind, but it barely lived. But this Wolfie with the life full sap, it is showing that he's not going anywhere. He's just gonna chill here for the rest of his life. I think to Wine might go first now, right? Because having plus three speed is good on Minotaur, but. Against a Naga, it can be a bad thing as well. But Naga can go B4 to Wine as well and kill the Wine itself. I believe it that Naga goes always before because it already have like side search ready. So Lorex taking that, <laughs> have that in mind. Ma need to make make a swap here. But here comes actually the Fury. So Wolfie will not take any damage and Calvis will take this really good. By the way, this is the fourth AoE move used in this match so far. And Wolfie has dodged four of them so far. Two black, I think one black hole, one ultrasound, one fury. And there was something else as well that was AoE which was dodged by Wolfie. Uh, toxic shower? Did you yep, saw that? Yep, yep, toxic shower, that is it. So Wolfie have got so much value and also now having Lifeful Sap here ticking like what you gonna do how are you gonna stop this wolfie so here comes the tank applying on naga here going down to six percent which means the tick will finish it off a better burst landing on the wolfie putting it to 52 a div is coming into the mina four it's barely surviving at 11 percent Haste along on towards the Calabas and not be able to take it out, which means it's going for a... Okay, not a huge overexertion, but it would have been an overexertion either way. But this means there's only one temp remaining. Yeah, this is looking very, very rough and I don't think he might come back from this at this HP and these Staminas. The typings were really rough for Sephius here. And <laughs> Mom's launch here, trying to putting more exhaustion here on towards the spider here. Eating this unseen blow really comfortably. Like, Kido have done some good work as well. Like, he's been taking damage, delivering some damage as well. And Cepheus realizing I can't do anything more. Like, Lorax is just the floor of the man, or we should, I should probably call him the floor of the wall. Wells is one of these aggression players, and especially an, a duck enthusiast, so he loves his Saipan and he's trying everything to get it work. I mean, one of the conditions to win against Wells is ban the Saipan, put some mental pressure on him right away. Um, predictions are online guys, Valteria versus Welsh, feel free to put your bets on. Let us get into this match, Welsh again, the first pick as you see on the top is Saipan. Always proud of having it in the team. Monkey is being banned right here by Volteria. Seismic going out. Question is, what is Welsh going to be banning? There is a lot of things that requires a ban here from Welsh. On yeah, the like we can go side. Yeah, like you're having like you have a uh, rat, you're having uh, the nature coach, you have Garoon. They're now always getting a ban, which is, I mean, quite understandable. Like you, it does quite a lot of damage on like Jukama, depending what the Mimi turns into, Hasrat. Uh, I bull I'm not really sure if Wimplop having good defense or not, but that is not a though it's just since half damage, but the Koi is gonna take a lot of damage and same goes to the Volorant. So all this is a quite a good ban here. And also one of one of the very few or the only P jabber on Ulterior side here. And Volterra is going directly with a Akronite here. Maybe we'll see the same start like last time. 
there's if we're playing like having this uh, ob agronite start here sparking getting it uh, electricity typing maybe it can do something and i also believe that that had a t-strike as well so getting that will definitely be beneficial against welch We do see also hazards being picked up here together with the Mimit, so that means it will be a double Hazrat. So I, I'm still not quite sure where you're positioning it to getting it your own or if you're copying the other, but this is gonna probably, if I remember correctly, this is gonna be a double Hazrat, which is not a bad start to do, but you have to be though very cautious what attack you're gonna be attacking on towards uh, Akna, because if you're attacking fire, that means you can't do any fire damage on towards it, but that means you can do your toxic damage. Mm -hmm. Double hazard can be scary. Welsh is running a full aggro team as we talked about it. Look at this uh, like team. Everything is screaming aggression from Welsh's screen. I don't even know if that um, Saipat is normal Saipat or Shuin's on one, but... This is a double heat up game at the moment from what we can see at least, but that Iraq that can be a problem if it hits hard. Yeah, definitely. And we do see a fire coach together with a wind plump here. So that means you can now apply uh, two ways of uh, water cannon, but also the fire synergies for Hasrat and of course for the fire coach itself and such. So already like welch having like an interesting team that's going in, into this board here while valkyrie is taking obi and hazrat as well into that and we're gonna going to see his legendary side pad unfortunately it's not a luma which i hope next time you play you having a luma yeah welch is being a disappointment in the club lately because of not having a luma So now, there's not a lot of pressure I see from Valkyria's side that could happening here. Mm -hmm. However, now it is like a decision. I don't think Adore Boros can like giving some sort of a buff to Wars, uh, Arcanite just to popping the special attack. But Arcanite can still do some damage anyway towards it. But Adoro can still apply like an energy manipulation just to drain more stamina from one of the rats. Do you think that swapping in the nature... Mm, no, nature curse is actually getting delayed. Do yeah. you think ob can actually live a double lane? Mm. It if it's a... Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's a... What is it called? Um... Uh, now I forgot about the, the fire moon or something. Uh, Lava wave. If that's coming in, yes, it does not survive. But if it's, of course, wait closer. Hmm. But we do see the classic uh, heat up here happening, and already the mimic is down below forty percent, which is something that you don't want to see along with mimic. But mimic is alive which is still important for welch so now is the question what tem is he going to swap out like if you're taking out the real hazrat sure that means it's still healthy plus two attack pretty comfortable and you can throw in something else in the other slot and just go better with whatever move you're doing and that doro doesn't have high defense the problem I think I was going to say is that Arachnid has Thunderstrike and it kills everything in the back. Whiplum doesn't like it. Um, Koish doesn't like it as well and Cypher does not as well. So Arachnid needs to be killed here, right here, right now. Yeah, th this, this is... Okay, so I'm going to take it back since now it got converted into fire, which means... It's not going to... Oh, it's barely surviving that. Here's the other thing that if he decided to 
if he knew about this, this was an adaptive, which haven't already been scouted, he could actually go one with Lava Wave and the other one going Wastewater. Which means Correct. it most likely would have died. Yeah, that adaptive actually saved it up, to be honest. That was yeah, a definitely. play by the spider, it definitely left there on that. Now the question is, how is that gonna go in the long run? Because this Whiplum definitely has damage as well, but the problem is that Arachnite... Well, it is slow. We have already established that, that it is slow. It is not going fast, so that's one thing. And you kind of have to get this Arachnite out of here. Sure, even though you can do a harmful microwave on towards Astrath, but you, it feels like you kind of have to guarantee the kill. Like, if you can't guarantee the kill on half threat, then it's no point for Akna to even jump on, on the board here. Like, stay on the board, so you kind of have to retreat it. But then, what would you throw in instead? Like, the only thing I could see is poten potentially your Obi, but he's staying. As we do see another Emanip is landing, putting it down to 50.2%. A cold breeze coming in, finishes off that night, which means the slingshot proc. Slingshot user, by the way, damn. That is the day I wanted to not see in my life, but looks like we have a <laughs> slingshot user now. Now. Kind of have to go down to like, if this OB is max speed, can this Wimplum still outspeed with a water cannon with plus one? If Welch have done the calc and can outspeed a max speed with just one plus speed, then a water cannon together with a lava wave will definitely securing the kill on that OB without any question. Mm -hmm. This Whiplump actually kills almost the whole enemy team um, if it starts attacking other than the Nature Koish. And it completely ignoring about that that Obian actually goes directly for uh, this Adoro. Which is also actually a issue and the Lava Way securing the kill there which means one of the Toxics is gone. And a triple A tried to spark, but it failed. That is a lot of momentum it, gone, to be honest. Even a Telsa prison would have been better there. Yeah, you kind of like, if you could do some pressure towards that wind plump, that would have been amazing. And also knowing you say free prio will happen. And if you can just get rid of it, so. Telsa prison, or even if it runs E-Storm. That would also have been good. Now, with Hazard here on the board, it can actually start applying some damage towards Wimplump with Wastewater here. As Wells is kind of forced to stay in with Wimplump here. Sure, you can do a Cold Breeze just to apply a chip damage. If it doesn't run with a Hurricane or Gust, I don't know if which of them a wind plump have right now, but another wind move will definitely happen. It is probably Cold Breeze again if it wants to do that. But no, he goes with the water cannon, taking it down to 38.3%. Telsa Prison comes in. Will be good enough damage. 52.1 wastewater coming in, securing the kill right now. And this means also that with this swapping for Psypad, Nichosai is actually available. And by I looking also... Yes? So that Koish comes in now, right? Because he will keep the hazard later on for the nature Koish. Because I believe this Psypad must be a Shuin on Psypad. So I think... Yeah, well, she's saving that, uh, saving that hazard for the nature Koish later on. So he can deal with it. Oh, 
I'm wondering though if this could be a potential be a, a heat up for ha Hazard here for Valteria. But it doesn't happen that. A, a Sween's Horn Saipan is coming in and taking care of the Triple A. Yeah, that's a triple. What am I saying? As I was saying, a Sween's Horn Saipan is definitely destructive. What we can expect now, though, is probably a Nico Sai coming in from this Saipan and. Trying to do as much damage as he can to that Hazrat right now itself so that next turn the enemy Hazrat can take care of the nature coish. Yeah. Because this nature coish can't do anything about that Hazrat. So if you can just get rid of Valkyria's Hazrat here, you are definitely in a really good position. And I think, unfortunately, for uh, Fire Coish here, kind of have to go I'm, i mean sure you, you probably can go for water cannon because it just do regular damn neutral damage or ice cube even but if you want to do lava wave hmm. ninja jutsu is also an option that saipat has right now of course ice cube is three prior as well it will go first here um in case that coach is fast but we don't know the speeds of these stems at the moment That is true, but I think in, like if we talk about Saipat itself, like it's I think it's better for it to using Ninja Sai here because you're getting stab, you're getting a lot more value damage over Ninja. Ninja is something that you only click if you want to secure a kill, and you feel and you know that okay, this is a range where Saipat can secure the kill, and then you click on it. At this point, you kind of have to go with Ninja Sai, try to I do mean, as much damage as possible. The thing is, if Saipat is not fast enough. Because they have water cutting lily and they have lava wave. Uh, sorry, yeah, lava wave and water cutting lily three prior. If even one of them is faster than Saipat, then they will go first with their three prior. And ninja basically is a secured hit, correct? I'm not sure. I mean, I mean yes. Welch probably has an idea by now on how fast his Saipat is. He goes with the safe play, ninja jutsu coming in. Doing roughly 35% here, and here comes the lava wave on towards the nature coish and applying more than 54% on towards that. The water cup leader securing the kill on the side pad here quite comfortably, and Hazrat is has to rest here. But if that decided to do a wastewater, I don't think it's enough. To take out the fire coach in that range, but since most the coach in general are pretty, they want to build it fast and hard hitting, they do not have a lot of HP. Mm -hmm. That Azra does not have heat up though. 1.22 do consider is that it doesn't have the heat up. Now, the problem here is we already established that Welch is really fast in this matchup, so. Hazard will outspeed the nature coach in terms of the lava wave and then it's a match between double hazard probably a coach so we will see how that works now yeah most like then here comes lava wave securing the kill here on the nature coach so that hp just disappeared there is just so much aggression right now ice cube coming in on that hazard And okay, so I I think I understand why you decided to go with the lava wave here, but I think okay, so you okay, so I see the fire chip there, so you try to do the extra damage, and hopefully you could kill the hazrat, but hazrat getting the half resistance, so and finish it off with the rush from Welsh and taking this to four one. Not very often that you see a Tutsu, but Tutsu having been getting a little bit of a buff with a new, not a new move, but an additional move, I'm gonna have to say, with the Haito Uchi, which makes it more viable to be playing. And of course, uh, the team tag also have been improved from 10 to 15, which means 
that you, you can help out your teammate even more. So in this kind of a team lineup, like this, this could be really a good like defensive team that helping out supportably, but also be a very aggressive forward. And we already see a first couple of bans here. We do see the Miniforce have been banned on Game Kong side here, while on the Turbulent side here, it is actually Grumper here. And yeah, I, I mean, have, like. I mean, I've been seeing yes. um, Tutsu popping up a lot lately, and it is definitely a thing to be noticed as well. And Turbian is going balls to the wall, I feel like, and starting with Pig immediately. And you have so many like different options what you can do with Pig. Like you could be this a, a little bit of an aggressive Pig, but Pig is more known for being the supportive Pig, especially with his own uh, signal move, no signature move. Which it is qu quite amazing of an a the animation of that one as well and we do see the naga standing next to it as well so we will probably see a stone wall popping up there on turn two but that uh, with the garuda on the other side makes this naga doesn't want to stay on the board do you think this pig is actually one speed or really really slow to do bamboozles um stone walls and so on i mean we do not see very often scuffed pigs but just having no TVs on towards Pig is, I mean, it's quite slow, but I believe in Garunda is even slower if it doesn't have any TVs, TV invested. So if you have one SV Pig, I believe me, that would even underspeed Garunda. The second wave of bans have happened, as we do see. We see that Meshuk has been banned on Turbian's side here, and Tall can be banned on Kim the Kong side here. And Kim the Kong is almost picking immediately here. Um, Jimurian and the Beyblade. So we're having like a, some kind of a, a really aggressive town that Kim picks up here, which is quite balancing quite well with the other that is there. And of course, the Quetzal Synergy together with the Vangs. Sarnif, Mimit, and Sarko on the other side here. So this could be the first time I'm actually going to see Sarko in action being a physical fighting salad than a special attacking hitting salad. Yeah, yesterday in tournament, even in tournament finals, that Sarko was definitely packing a punch. It was doing so much impact as well. And we did see how people are starting to like the new legacy, uh, the new Sarko as well. Okay, so I tried to like see what could potentially happen this first turn here, and I think in what you said earlier about pig that it could definitely ban bullsol here, but it's all go down to if it's this is a scuff pig or if it's just without any TV and still go before Garunder in DA. But if that's not the case, then the pig has to be uh, one speed to secure that. Mm -hmm. I really think Mom's Lunch as an item is really, really good. It gives so much um, for mid-range teams, you know, because they they can assert so much pressure with the stamina game and getting some stuff out of the board. If they have some heavy hitting moves and you know they are going to use that, you just put that in and it almost, you know, drains out the whole stamina bar from them. Yeah, so this is like a item that you kind of want to have control over the board here so a waste water will lose so much here and we see Naga's actually going straight through the balls here and we do see immediately um the waste water is going before the pig here so this is not a scuffed pig but thank you for that pig where balance between which means you kind of removed the poison take and also blocking the matter teleport. So now mm -hmm. Naga doesn't take two times, but another double up, this Naga is dead. But now you have uh, your favorite move, uh, Naga's Fury, ready, which means can do a lot of damage towards Aoi. But yeah, I Kim having Aoi. Wolf in the backline. Mm -hmm. I don't think Aoi wants to stay in here for sure. Wolfie coming in. 
Might probably be the best um, way to do it. But Torbjorn is saving that Nagat's Fury for later and letting a Salad coming in instead. Facing the Garun, they're probably going to use another Waste Water. They take an opportunity using the DA for getting that stone wall into action here. So that did only 25 without the tick. And a Saka with nutrition. That's an interesting one because I think I have not seen the suck with a nutrition bar yet. Uh, most people have been running hand fan sock and it was really hurting hard by the way. I can see that definitely but it, it, it sounds like you had a question. I was thinking of it but I think I answered myself in mind so it's fine. Plus two ah. defense plus one special defense Saku is definitely a cracking nut that doesn't easily die. But still wastewater is gonna hurt hard I think. The toxic ticks do hurt. Yeah, that's the only problem with the poison takes will definitely taking away that health slowly. But Garunder is out of stamina. If not, Kim definitely go balls to the wall. Go for an overexertion just to try to apply a little bit more damage. And then you're getting help from Chimurian with additional uh, CPG damage here. And Zagla's going off here with the life full. And oh, the pig is where about to taking the whip in front of its face. But this Colossus is suddenly popping in here, taking it like it was a big champ there. And the Brumatian Garun is taking one plus defense here. So this means this Sako, if not the Sako is, um, I mean, of course, it is definitely a physical one, but depending. If it's going to be using a lot of uh, wind move, that's the only thing that can do some decent damage here because all the nature move, they won't be efficient. This match is slowly, um, like, from what I can see, Tudirabon definitely wants this match to go slow so he can start buffing up and win this match in the long run. But Kim Kong needs to end this match quicker and not let the buffs go set up. But either way, right now, both of the sides are looking pretty solid and they are getting there. Well, they are trying to achieve what they are trying to achieve by the turns they can. But Kim, I think, is slowing down in terms of damage incoming because uh, both of the salads have hit the ground and he definitely has to counter this. Or get them moving around at least because otherwise they are going to keep healing and that's going to be a problem. And here comes the Purgation Garun, they're putting it to plus one attack here. But here comes Sakos, accumulating a slap, doing 10%, and that was with plus one defense, but that defense is now gone. So this means Garun is down to base defense here, and Garun's defense is not super high, so... Even though Garun will eat all nature damage quite well, having low defense is not in a good position. Think that Aoi can make enough damage to make these two people back out of here, or make at least one of them um, back out. Like I think Cerniv doesn't mind taking a physical attack to get another stack of velocity. Uh, Cerniv doesn't mind at all. Like even if you double up on Cerniv, um, sure the, the poison take will be definitely be an issue. Uh, you kind of like need, need to i don't know how how you're controlling sako here because you you need to get rid of the the healing take from sako but that means you have to do wastewater and i will have to do a fiery soul and mostly i always are not playing as a special attacker they are running as physical Wastewater comes in on the Saku, removes the healing ticks. This is a really problematic situation because burn and toxic will always remove the saps. 
So Saku out of his healing right now. He will be down to 37%. 36 barely. I don't think this is in range to Quetzat and getting the boost damage from Vengs. You I feel like you kinda have to go more applying more damage with Garunda, but that means Garunda going for an overexertion. And if you're expecting the heal comes up again, yeah, you you kind of have to get rid of it again. This is literally Kusiva stall that I can see right now. Surnip Saku, Lifeful Sap again. It feels annoying. Yeah, it def definitely feels annoying, but ha this Garunder having matcha is still valuable for Garunder because how efficient the moves are, like they cost so much stamina, so it needs something to get back its stamina. And match is absolutely one of them that can helping out getting back stamina quickly. But that means you have to sacrifice a turn, which you have to kind of rest. But for Garunder, being a Brumatian, kind of likes that way anyway, because you're getting defense. But as long as Sako's on the board, of course Sako's having low stamina right now. But if Sako had more stamina, it can continuously do slap, which means you're lowering Garunder's defense. Mm -hmm. It is just a cycle of things that's going on back and back and back and forth again. Um, but eventually one of them has to run out of stamina and that will be Saku, not Garunder, because of the matcha. So Saku eventually has to back out right now and chill out a little bit in the back. Yeah, and I think Kim could do another combo with um, Stair and Wastewater on particular Saku song. You kind of have to wait with Sarni because, I mean, it's already plus two. You kind of have to wait until like when it's getting closer to, to the end game, finding a way to deal with it. But you have to start f dealing with the other issue, which is the Saku. But we do see both Zernif and Saku retreating, letting Pig and Naga comes in on the board here. Fury Soul comes in. We'll be applying the burn. Wastewater comes in as well. Oof, that Pig doesn't like that. It will be down with the burn. And I think that's down to 32% as well. 31, 32, 31.7. Okay, so Aoi doesn't want to stay here anymore. So it has to leave immediately. Garuda can stay. It's absolutely fine. But I think Pig have an opportunity to actually using uh, what's it called? The Divine... Whatever this Pig's move is called. I, I do not remember it. Divine Inspiration. It was a nice one, JT. You almost cracked me up as well. <laughs> I mean... We are, I we're all scuffed in, in Norway, right? Yes, I mean, I know, I know. You're a Viking, you don't... You don't take a pig, a pig a pig as your god, because you believe in Odin. But it's okay, man. He's a divine inspiration in Temtem universe. You gotta respect <laughs> the Lord Pig. I definitely respecting the pig now because of that move. <laughs> we do see Sagas coming back in on the board again. So we will most likely see another uh, Stowals coming in here that's going to be applied towards uh, Saku here. Well, Wolf is brought in because of expecting that... Um, what's called it? That uh, Naga's Fury. Hmm. Well, we have Saku again. At plus three, plus two at the moment with the buff supplied from Pig a Pig again with the stone wall. 
The circle is gonna become a problem. There is no reset users on the other side. So buffs cannot be removed and eventually this circle can be very very hard to kill even with toxic ticks and fires because we have seen before Saku defeating the toxics defeating the fires as well when the time comes yeah definitely i mean i think you can handle Saku, but and you're definitely having one one champ that can remove in defense at least but you don't have too many options to remove special defense Ah, uh, it's a, the classic handcuffs Wolfie removing the heal. And here comes the divine inspiration. The pig epic bridge there, applying to giving another special defense to Saku. Even though this Garunder is trying to do a lot of work here, it had been doing some decent work here, like back and forwards, especially. I mean, Aoi, Garunder have done some good work towards. Pig, Garunder have done some excellent work towards. <laughs> Naga, it had been doing some work as well towards Sako, but Sako had been just been a real annoying salad. I don't know, this match is looking very rough right now. For Kim, the buffs are definitely stacking up. And every time the buffs do stack up, it does feel bad because the damage will eventually be less than what the healing is going on for. Yeah, and I'm thinking at this point, like, I'm understanding that Kim kind of want to get rid of the one of the problem with having. Um, Saku there, but it feels like at the moment you kind of have to lean towards which is the more problem, the one that actually gives the the stone walls there, which you kind of have to attack with the pig. Mm -hmm. He can possibly and do even another stone wall if he wants to on the Saku. And maybe get away with it but i think he might not get away with that a double inch should be able to kill that pig mm -hmm. and there's really no way for kim to get some help back to on garunder and i mean I think at some point Garunder should have give one of the purgation to Aoi. Aoi will do also good work on Sako, Sarni. It will also do some decent, de uh, decent work as well on Pig Epic as well. And here comes the first kill after so many turns in. The Fainted Curse will definitely take care of. The Garunder, but he sacrificed it for a reason, and Desperate Typhoon couldn't go through the evasion there. And we have once more an equal board of attempts. And this time, it look it's if we're looking just only at the percentage on the health wise, it's more favorable towards Kim. But if you're looking over all over the board, yeah, I can see it's more towards uh, Torbjorn. The thing here is that, again, Cernif and Saku, how do you kill this combo? He's getting out of my head right now. I think it's way too late. It is quite late, yeah. And um, like I pointed out like two turns ago at least, that you, you kind of need to, f you should have focused much sooner on Pig. If you did that, maybe that could have been a little bit better for um for kim in this situation well, but here AOE comes he doesn't help the situation the chimurian is now really threatened by that aoe yeah oh here comes the stair together with the cpg still doing a good amount of damage here towards that mimit 
and there is no neutral tam on the turbian side here to giving that quetzal. But if it's already max speed, I mean, it can just fret out Shimmerion here. That is not an issue. But Aoi can still deal some good damage towards uh, Mimit. While Zarnif can do nothing on this board. Yeah, Zarnif can't really do much damage. It's probably just swapping out if it wants to, but... Even if it just sits in there, he can, if he has Shy Shield, he can use that and try to get some defenses up. It definitely has Shy Shield. Uh... And I think that it could also be needed at this point. Since we're having the bait blade is coming in here that can do some really nasty damage here. Fire Soul applying towards Vangs, and we see that it's not a arcane uh, an arcane wrap. It is definitely a uh, parrier. The Imperium uh, Barrier ranks value. All the physical attacks that are about to come in, they just found some value, but Naga comes in. The thing is, Naga can probably get killed here if... Hmm, what are the swaps on the back? Let me take a look. Wolfie looks good, Chimurian looks good as well. Yeah, both looks really good to hop in on like either of the slots, but I think... I think you kind of want to go bold to here and you're letting actually Aoi stay. Because mm -hmm. you see, there's no drill user. Naga will go before Zernif, if not Zernif acts as running with the uh, front wave. Then you kind of have to realize that problem and maybe reposition yourself. Which Kim is actually taking too cautious. Knowing that it's, it's an issue, swapping in to taking the minimum damage. But we do see Sizerge coming in here instead, landing on Shimurian, which is still good for Shimurian. Taking that really good. Activating the bait as well. Well, that just makes that Shimurian even more annoying, if it was not already. Yeah, it is really annoying right now. So a double up there did almost 30%, but Shimurian just shrugging and be like, hey, what you doing? You know what I'm gonna do towards you? Mm. So Even if Swrap happens, it, it's gonna hurt hard. But the problem is, as long as Wolfie is alive, Wolfie is gonna deny all the lifeful saps, you know? Yep. Yeah. That's gonna be an issue, and Front Whip will probably be landing on the Naga, so Turbion has to make, take caution of that, swapping in Saku. Now Saku can't flee, because he's got now trapped. Here comes the Crystal Bloom, landing still on the Saku. It is basically tickling. But, you're having this issue where... Kim can't do a lot of damage towards Torben right now. However, Zarnif is having its stamina issue, so you kind of forced to rest at one point to just gaining back more stamina. Saku, however, can apply some pressure all the time, but at one point you have to rest also with Saku. Naga can, can do anything at this point. Naga has to wait until like at least two of the threats are gone, then Naga can come in and sweep the board. But Kim is definitely having like a more comfortable position. And we see Plague landing directly on Cerny here, expecting to do a, uh, a hard hitting move here, but it's only a shy shield which is also taking a little bit of stamina there. An H that will apply on Towards the Shimmerion slot, which indeed a, a it's a um, Aoi, so it's lower defense now. So a Disparate Typhoon can do some more damage here on towards that slot, and Kim needs to get this either out of out of here, or you have to kind of sacrificing it and try to do as much damage as possible here. I think we are like at a half point of the game. Um... Turn 16, turn 17 at the moment. 
it's either Kim just tries to survive till the very very end or else he has to I don't know Kim doesn't have an option Kim just has to survive somehow without all the heals cuz clearly Totira Bane is not looking like he's the one who's giving up here he's just gonna chill out uh, the order of those moves kind of wrecks it because the burn doesn't go first. Saku is slowly gonna kill everything if it is given the space to do so. But this looks like a bad game for Kim where he cannot win despite having so much of an advantage. Earlier in yeah. case, with all those buffs on those two times only. It is looking very difficult for Kim right now to close this match. Cerny and Saku are so strong back in Kisiva. We have seen the be uh, the worst of the worst matters out there. When Cerny and Saku will literally drag your whole team out in the wild. And Elvo will just go for over Cerny. If there is no revitalize, that Cerny might be dying. But there is a revitalize. It will be healing back up all the way to 37.8% and that is a GG. That is so rough. It just basically needed more than 2.5% on either of the Thames to taking out that Cernif and that would have been putting it in a slightly better position. But now, Vangs and Shamira in the back line going to Pop in here, try to do something. I mean, Sarney and Saka is gonna be liking this board. And you also have no, no attempt now that can actually um, remove the defense from um, Sarney, even though the Colossus will still proc if you as soon as you're hitting it. Yeah, I think this is really impossible for Kim to win at the moment. He's just gonna waste some turns, but the healing is almost gonna outright do more um, healing than the damage done. I can go shave my beard and be back and this match is still going, probably. <laughs> With what beard, sir? I have a beard, okay. It's a small one, but it's still something, okay. <laughs> this guy's making fun of me, guys. Not fun. Ball is fun. Yeah, yeah we can see that. The wall right now, he can't do anything at the moment. When you see the green in front of you, you can't really do much, I guess. Nine turns left, Kim is slowly choking and stroking down. Uh, the HPs are going down, there is no way those HPs are looking going up again. It looks really, really rough. That Naga needed to die at one point sooner, but it is hard as it is right now. Still trying to do the damage these stems can do, putting it down to... 33.5% Kim is trying to make it sort of possible here, but Turbian have no hesitation of clicking any moves knowing that If I'm getting an exhaustion, I, I don't want to click that means I'm gonna have put myself in, in a rough position and Enigma is taking that game, which means they are still alive in this um, expedition match Bonkers. It also has a Mushuk and a Tutsu. This this monkey doesn't seem good, but is there something that is hidden that we do not know of, maybe? I am not entirely sure, but uh, one thing is first, Saga. Make sure you fix that uh, prediction. Yep, it is up and online now. People can ah, put sweet. On. And ooh, Torpion is actually have putting up now a kind of good of a wall here, I'm gonna have to say, with some salad and some melee toxic wall here for this monkey. But I believe in still that uh, 
Sensmarch can still apply some good pressure if we're looking like a little bit more in the back line. If we can get at least one heat up and then starting to um, uppercutting left and right or even helicopter kick, which is also going to be doing a pretty good jo job here. Tell me something. I'm telling you what. How do you deal with Cerny if, if Hazard is banned right now? Like, if Hazard is banned and there's a water cutting Lily coming in on Monkey, how do you deal with this? I see four things and all of them are weak to that water cutting Lily. Am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. This looks like a one sided game, at least by draft. This looks really, really bad at the moment for Welsh. It kind of looks, it's not the best start. I mean, I'm wondering though, what making him go immediately uh, monkey here, but at the same time, like, Hazard could have jumped in as second, but then again, like, at, at point of getting a nature and a toxic move on the sandstorm slot here, like, anything dies there, like, out of the get-go. Mm -hmm. And um, we do not know yet what's the trait on this um, Volorant, and uh, we do not even know if this uh, Mushok having tenderness, as far as we know. Yeah, we will find out, I guess, because last game we didn't see it, and before that, when Welsh played, we didn't see the Volorant as well. Yeah, I believe he never picked Volorant. I if not Volorant were banned, but I never think he picked it up when he played. So Grumper and Hazard have been the second wave banned, and Wells kind of have to go with all of the water he have like remaining. And uh, Turbine is back with almost like the same set of tams I'm gonna have to say, except from Mashuk. Sans much waller and Koishwa, Plump of Kama, Sonic, Mashuk, Pegapek, Mehmet, Sako. I don't know, this looks pretty rough to be honest if you ask me, but there is a way. The way is that if this Sernif somehow dies, then there can be a way that Welsh can sneak back into this match. And I think this match is just going to be sent into the Oblivion. No, React Vital Munch. And here comes the Cold Breeze Volorant, which is then a aerobic volorant slingshot mashup hmm. question still remains how do you kill the sony do you just plan to freeze it down to death can't really do that because one revitalize heals a lot more than that and the fact that both Saku and Pegapek have, uh, Saku and Cernif have made it through, it means that they can stack up again if they get the time to breathe. Mm -hmm. And also, if another P jab is coming in towards Volorant, an uppercut go. It's not gonna finish off, but it's definitely gonna apply a lot of damage towards Volorant, which will not be. Volorant will not be in a good position at all. And Sarnif is leaving immediately and letting Piggy coming in. Expecting a H cast coming in on that slot. Oh, it's trying to waste more stamina of it, but it doesn't care as another cold breeze is coming in here. Waste water is removing the nullifier from Sensman share and, and an uppercut coming on towards the pig here. So we can now expect either Cerny for Saku to come in on the other slot and a stone wall to follow up, right? 
that's how it's been going so far um in the last match whenever we saw that sequence happening yeah but there is no naga for uh, turbian here so we will know that stonewall will be last but mm -hmm. here maybe um, pig is still kind of comfortable just to put out one because pig that uppercut probably, did nothing pig probably will be frozen yep that is right um telos i just realized But also, we see also this Mashuk uh, have been running low on stamina as well. But this could also be... Um, this could be a tireless Mashuk as well, as we have not seen what is what this is yet. And another Cold Breeze is coming in here, freezing this Cernif Getting another speed here, and uppercut is coming and applying towards the wind plump here. Go for an overexertion here, and that with with that information, we know it is a parrier and not a tireless. So now is the question, though, when having wind plump out here. Ah, wait, it's having like an opportunity, having options to like attack in either of the slot here, but at this point you kind of have to go full full jam on Sarni, and that hyperkinetic strike is strength so much as it did it even do 50% with that. And here comes the tornado, so from 52.1% it's going to go down to 15.8%. But this means this water got literally going to almost finish off Wimplump here. Now is the question here. The Volorant does probably does, doesn't have a tornado here. If it does, that would be amazing, but that means it's going for an overexertion. And if Wimplump have another prior free with a wind move, it can definitely secure the kill on uh, certainly fair. But as, as long as Pig is there, a chain heal could happen, but Pig is not the fastest Pig here. But anyway, with a plus 4 Volorant here on the board, it Volorant can definitely do even more pressure if it can... Um, land off another HKS, but that has to wait a turn. However, if Pig have any special moves and landing on Volorant, that Volorant will take huge damage. But as as the Sarnif is now leaving, taking that Nox Bomb directly in its face, this Sarko, and a water, water cannon on towards Pig, applying more pressure there. Stonewall will be happening on the Sako here, getting it at plus two, plus one with the nutrition bars happening. Now you're putting a pressure on two different ways. And I think this Volorant had the perfect stamina, so it didn't go over exertion here. However, if you want to still be able to use in this Wimple for another turn, you have to swap it out. But you kind of need to as well, like, you want to find a way to defeating that Mushuk. Because Mushuk is kind of fragile when it comes to special defense, if it's not invested a lot into it. Since it doesn't run with double screen, it's going to take a little bit more wind damage. So you want to be able to still keep that. But right now, that Welsh is having very low stamina on both both times here, so he have to be very cautious and taking out his Volorant for now, letting Yukama coming in, taking potentially hit here. Same goes for the Wind Plump. So a double swap is happening here, and the Fire Coach will come in on the other side here. So let's see what is the Turbian is going to be doing this turn. A pig have been retreating, and will turn into a, another floating salad. And here comes the front whip. Does almost 40% towards the Koish here. 
but this means that the level wave is in a good position on towards Mimmit. But if Mushux comes in, that means it will tank that quite well. But if you're facing and try to do a lot of damage towards Saku, you're not gonna get as much value out of it. I'm back. You could... Welcome back, welcome back. But I'm still thinking that you're still having value to going for the Mimit here, if Namashox comes back in, and Welch is running with the Blizzard here, you can getting so much value immediately. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference between the last match and this match. Um, Welch, while still doing low on HP, you can see how he has more damage output and, you know, he's not giving the time to breathe on the other side where... You can see that Cernip is on 15%, Pig is on 15%, which means they cannot just come in and try to buff while living on 1 HP. They will risk dying themselves if they try to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And this lava wave is putting it down to 37.6%. And here comes the water cannon. Additional to that, which is putting it up to 25%. A Desperate Typhoon combo, maybe? Nope. But anyway, the fire poise have been eliminated, which means it's the first casual temp to die. The Volorant is back on the field again. That is indeed a plus four speed, which means Nox bombs will be flying left and right. Well, the problem is, I feel really bad right now because I was worried for Volorant for a second with that minus four special defense. But then it just clicked to me that this Saku is no more a special attacker, you know, it's it's now a physical attacker. So minus one defense only is what we'll be taking damage here for, I guess. Um, Toxic yeah, Doom but... is probably coming in on this turn, if, they, if he has it, that is. Yeah, but I think you still have to be worried because... Even the Volorant having higher special defense, well, now it's a minus four. Volorant doesn't really have a high defense itself, so that minus defense not gonna make it better in this situation. Mm -hmm. And here comes another Cold Breeze, which will maximize the speed damage here. And here comes the Tsunami, going to freeze the Saku and killing the pig. Not gonna lie, this freeze comp is slowly but steadily working right now in favor of Welsh right now, slowing down the momentum of this match. He's using freeze as a second component for his team while his main component is pure aggro in this team. And so far in this match, I would say it is working. It cannot even bring that Mushuk in because Mushuk will be taking attacks from that Wolverine in the face. Yeah, and even if Zernif called me in, like, Zernif can't even outspeed this Volorant, even with, um, even if Volorant decides to do a Nox Bomb, I believe a Nox Bomb will just outspeed a prior free, but since you have HK online, you just want to guarantee the kill, so. And I don't know if a Mushuk likes a plus 5 speed HKS coming its way, to be honest. Nah, I mean... Do you do you want a, a jet that's coming in your way that is plus five and knocking you back to wherever you come from? I mean, Noxious Bomb is pretty free here. So Noxious Bomb and Blizzard basically hits effective on everything, right? Uh, Noxious Bomb kills the Mimit, it kills the Cernif, maybe. Um, Nox, uh, Mushuk will not take much, but then Blizzard from Ukama will definitely do a lot. Uh, Welch can decide to just rest with this Ukama if it wants to. Because he needs to do a Tsunami next turn to keep that Saku under the freeze, you know? Yeah, however, I think you can actually do a uh, Water Cannon on towards the Frozen Saku as well, just applying pressure there as, as well. That is a possibility for sure, yes. So here comes a Nox Bomb flying towards a uh, Ranger that had been collapsed because it got lost. Right, looks like they go with that as well, and they will be getting that toxic ticks going as well on that side. Now, the options are very limited. 
it's a Mehmet or a Mushuk. Mushuk comes in, hyperkinetic on its way. Straight out, the way he comes in, the way he goes out, that's how fast it will be if that does happen. I, I mean, well, Wolverine would make that much impact in this match, but we can clearly see this Wolverine is making an impact in this match for sure. Yeah, but I think in Wells could go the next step. Like, if now Turbian is going to do the swap, like, he could just, you know, do a cold breeze together with a tsunami just to apply a, um, a freeze towards uh, Mushuk. But it's going to be a question, can Mushuk even outspeed with just one plus speed? But I think you know, Wells is kind of interested in just clicking on that uh, HKS and not clicking on Mushuk and just getting it out of here. But we do see Mushuk is leaving the battlefield, letting Mimit come in. Going to try to take that hit and hopefully survive me with the Paton Pass here. And here comes the HKS happening on the Mimit and it's, it's taking just 20%. Roughly 20%. Unfortunately for Volorant, Volorant kind of have to rest at this turn. And I mean, sometimes you do, you do gotta rest, but I mean, even if it doesn't rest, it can cold breeze and tsunami, you know? Unless it does Yeah, but... Out. I mean, since when did Sensmunch learn tsunami? Ah, well, that's fair enough. Yeah, I think this is just a rest turn and he's chilling here right now with the monkey. He can actually uppercut and try to kill the Mimit because, well, we know size, I mean, Sakura speeds are not the best out there, so definitely can work out. I don't know if risking Whiplump is the best choice there. I think you could have the... Mm. Here comes Denmark. Denmark is even better here, just securing some damage here on towards Mushuk. Typhoon taking care of uh, Munch here, but that means Wimplum have his tornado online again, which means if put, you're putting pressure towards Mushuk here, Volorant could come back in here having the Nox Bomb ready for Sako, or you just do a cold breeze just to breeze mm -hmm. uh, Mushuk. I think he just goes with the tornado from Weplump on Mushuk and Cold Breeze on Saku. So in case the Mimit comes in for Mushuk, he can still take some damage. Uh, but the thing is he wants to save that Hyperkinetic Strike still he is like a guaranteed hit on that Mushuk, you know. Like right now that Mushuk can duck out and in, but once there is only two times left, he can destroy the Mushuk I guess. Like Welch is looking like in complete control in this match. Even if Whiplum dies, there is still an Okama that is ready to do the Tsunami combo for a Permafreeze. And here comes the Tornado on the Mushuk. And Mushuk falls down, which means the, the Duplicate Salad's gonna have to face this Volorant. This is the only time I regret Saku being a physical attacker and not a special attacker. Let alone his speed being less doesn't really help the case. I hope that um, Welsh has been paying attention. He needs to know that the the Saku on the right side does not have front whip, while the Saku on the left side has front whip. So which one should be frozen is what we should consider. If Okama dies, that might be a problem, but still I guess this Wolverine is fast enough to just freeze the game throughout from here on and just I don't win. think you, I do not think you have to ap apply freeze here. I think you just knock bomb on towards the the mimic and you apply poison takes on towards uh, on, on the real socket so you keep it the pressure there. Even if you're losing your your karma, you can still pressure with another knock bomb on towards the real socket. That that is doable as well, yeah. That can be doable. 
And I think that is the way he is going with for this. already next turn will probably be a uh... I mean bowler and still takes decent damage if it was focused earlier that could have been dead but there was very little that he could do and he was given very little time it is frozen and it will be water cannon now as well and that looks like a game because there will be a noxious bomb follow-up in the next turn itself Yes, and that knock knock should probably do, I mean, approximately at least 20%, and that should be enough for the tick to take care of it. And, that and that's GG G -G Legacy, but also GG to Enigma. G -G really good games, actually. The clubs, to be honest, they played really well, they tried and played their best we had so much fun today five and two would be the final score for legacy they will be taking this match away